Hi everyone, I'm Melinda, and before I continue with my story, please like and subscribe. I've been working as a hospital cleaner for over two decades now, and let me tell you, life hasn't been easy, but I've always kept my head high. Mom, we got straight A's again. Those words used to make all the double shifts worth it. My twins, Thomas and Sarah, were my whole world since they were born 25 years ago. I can still remember their tiny faces when they were five, the day their father James dropped the bomb. I want a divorce, Melinda. I've met someone else. Just like that. Twenty years of marriage gone. Sure, he sent some money, but try raising two kids in New York on a cleaner's salary and pocket change from a man who drives a Mercedes. Girl, you need to take a break sometimes. That's Maria, my best friend at work. She's been my rock through everything. These kids are lucky to have you. I just smile and keep mopping. Bills don't pay themselves, Maria. Every night I'd come home exhausted, but seeing my kids' homework spread across our small kitchen table made it all worthwhile. Mom, can you help me with this math problem? Sarah would ask. Or Thomas would say, Mom, I made dinner so you could rest. But things started changing when Victoria, James's new wife, entered the picture. She's this fancy real estate agent, about 10 years younger than me. At first, it was subtle. Your mom still cleaning toilets? I overheard her asking my kids during one of their visits. Such a shame she never had. Ambition. Dr. Rachel Chen, one of the few doctors who actually sees us cleaners as human beings, noticed something was off. Melinda, you seem worried lately. It's Victoria. She's... She's turning my kids into different people. Just remember, you're the one who's been there every single day, Dr. Chen said, squeezing my shoulder. These days, I sit in my small one-bedroom apartment, looking at old photos. The twins have their own place now. College degrees I scraped and saved for hanging on their walls. Twenty years of double shifts, endless overtime, and picking up extra work during holidays made that happen. You should be proud, Melinda. Maria told me yesterday during our lunch break. Most single moms couldn't have done what you did. I am proud. Proud but worried. Victoria's been inviting the kids to fancy restaurants, buying them expensive gifts. Things I could never afford. Last week, Sarah barely looked at me when I brought her some homemade soup. Thomas hasn't called in two weeks. They're adults now, Dr. Chen reminds me. They'll remember who was really there for them. I want to believe her. I really do. But something tells me there's more trouble ahead. Still, I keep going. Another day, another shift, another floor to clean. Because that's what mothers do. We keep going, no matter what. Looking at my bank account, I'm almost ready to retire. Not rich by any means, but I've saved enough to live modestly. Though lately, Victoria's voice keeps ringing in my kids' ears. Your mother's just a cleaning lady. As if that somehow makes me less of a mother. If only they could remember the bedtime stories, the school plays, the scraped knees I kissed better. But memories fade, don't they? Especially when someone's working hard to erase them. The call came on a Tuesday morning. James, dead from a heart attack. Despite everything, my hands shook when I heard the news. Twenty years of marriage doesn't just disappear, even after betrayal. We should go to the funeral together, Mom, Sarah said initially. But Victoria had other plans. At the will reading, I sat in the back, still in my work uniform. I couldn't miss another shift. That's when the bomb dropped. To my children, Thomas and Sarah, I leave five million dollars each, conditional upon ceasing all contact with their mother, Melinda. The room spun. Victoria's smirk told me she had something to do with this. It's nothing personal, just business, Victoria purred later. They're young. They need this money to start their lives. My own children wouldn't look me in the eye. The next day, Thomas called. Mom, you understand, right? Five million dollars? We can't pass that up. I gave up 20 years of my life for you. Yeah, and whose fault is it that you're just a cleaner? You could have done better, been better. But it got worse. Sarah showed up at my apartment, the one she now owned through James's earlier gift. You need to move out by the end of the month. 
Sarah, baby, this is my home. No, it's my property. Victoria helped me check the deed. You've got 30 days. Dr. Chen tried to help. Melinda, my husband Mark is a corporate lawyer. He's been looking into Victoria's involvement with James's company. But the rumors had already started spreading. Victoria made sure everyone heard her version. Poor kids, raised by a mother who was never there, always working, neglecting them. The irony burned. I missed events because I was working to feed them, clothe them, love them. You've been nothing but a burden, Thomas spat during our last conversation. Victoria showed us the truth. Dad left because you trapped him with pregnancy. I stood there, stunned. Is that what she told you? I worked two jobs while your father started his company. My salary paid for his first office. Just leave us alone, Sarah whispered, not meeting my eyes. We don't need you anymore. That night, Dr. Chen called. Melinda, Mark found something. Victoria's been involved in James's business decisions for years. There's more to this than just the will. What do you mean? She's been planning this, manipulating everything. Mark thinks there's something very wrong with the company finances. I sat in my soon-to-be former apartment, surrounded by 25 years of memories. Photos of first steps, school plays, graduations, all thrown away for money. Those ungrateful brats, Maria fumed during our break, after everything you sacrificed. Melinda, Dr. Chen said firmly, this isn't over. Mark's going to keep digging. Victoria's not as clever as she thinks. But right now, packing my life into boxes, it feels pretty over. 20 years of love traded for $5 million. My children's souls sold to the highest bidder, while Victoria stands back and watches my world burn. The worst part? They're not even acting like themselves anymore. It's like Victoria's poisoned them, turned them into calculating strangers who wear my children's faces. Moving boxes into Maria's spare room felt like admitting defeat. But my story wasn't over, just entering a new chapter I never expected. Melinda, good news. Dr. Chen caught me during my shift. The supervisor position is yours. You start next week. I don't know what to say. Say nothing. Just keep proving them wrong. That's when I met Frank Thompson, a retired detective recovering from surgery. He overheard me talking to Maria about Victoria. Something about your story doesn't sit right, ma'am. Mind if I ask some questions? Over coffee in the hospital cafeteria, I spilled everything. Frank's eyes narrowed. Your ex-husband's heart attack? Was he having health problems? No, James was healthy as a horse, always bragged about his perfect checkups. Frank started digging. Meanwhile, life took interesting turns. Thomas lost his job at the investment firm. Your son was caught trading stocks drunk, Maria reported from hospital gossip. Apparently, he's been showing up wasted for weeks. Sarah wasn't doing better. I saw her at the grocery store arguing about her credit card being declined. You want to hear something interesting? Frank called one evening. Victoria's been married three times before James. Each husband died mysteriously, leaving everything to their kids who then cut ties with their mothers. My blood ran cold. What are you saying? Dr. Chen's husband, Mark, connected the dots. Melinda, I found irregularities in James's medical records. Someone accessed them multiple times before his death. Someone with Victoria's credentials. There's more, Frank added. She's been running this scam for years. Marry rich men, manipulate their kids, arrange convenient accidents. But Victoria got sloppy this time. Through her investment advice, my twin's inheritance was disappearing fast. Mom? Thomas's voice cracked on my voicemail. I messed up. The money. It's almost gone. Sarah's Instagram showed her desperate attempts to maintain appearances. Designer clothes, luxury vacations. But Maria's daughter worked at the bank. She's drowning in debt, Melinda. Victoria convinced her to invest in some scheme. Frank brought more news. Victoria's been embezzling from James's company for years. She doctored documents, forged signatures. Your kid's inheritance? She's been siphoning it through fake investment accounts. Why hasn't anyone noticed? 
They're starting to. SEC's been watching her patterns. Previous victims are coming forward. I sat in Maria's kitchen. Photos of my kids spread before me. Their recent social media posts showed the cracks. Thomas's puffy face from drinking. Sarah's increasingly desperate attempts to maintain her lifestyle. Melinda, Dr. Chen said softly. Mark thinks Victoria's about to make her move. She's preparing to disappear with what's left of the money. Not this time, Frank growled. We've got enough to bring her down. Question is, you ready to watch your kids learn the hard way? I stared at the evidence pile. Medical records, financial documents, Victoria's previous victim statements. My children chose money over mother's love. Now they're learning that some things cost more than five million dollars. They made their choice, I finally said. Now they'll live with it. Sometimes the best revenge is letting karma do its work. The pieces were falling into place. Victoria thought she'd found another perfect mark. Instead, she'd finally met her match. I was reviewing business proposals in my new office when the news broke. The SEC had raided Victoria's home office. Her face plastered across every news channel. Wealthy widow arrested in multi-million dollar fraud scheme. Patricia Miller. Frank laid down a photo. Victoria's first victim's wife. She's testifying about how Victoria did the same thing to her family 15 years ago. The investigation revealed everything. Victoria had emptied the twins' accounts, leaving them with nothing but debt. Her investment advice was a sophisticated Ponzi scheme. Melinda, you're not going to believe this. Dr. Chen rushed into my office. Mark says they found evidence she tampered with James's heart medication. My phone buzzed. Sarah calling for the first time in months. I let it go to voicemail. Mom, please. We lost everything. The apartment, the cars. Victoria took it all. Can we just talk? Through the hospital grapevine, I heard Thomas was working as a bartender, still struggling with drinking. Sarah lost her luxury condo, moved into a cramped studio apartment. They're getting what they deserve, Maria said during our executive lunch. My promotion to environmental services manager had changed everything. Dr. Chen's proposal came at the perfect time. The hospital needs better medical waste management. With your experience, why not start your own company? Six months later, I signed the lease on my new house. My waste management company was thriving. Contracts with three major hospitals. Victoria's trial made headlines. Fifteen years, Frank announced. Plus restitution she'll never be able to pay. Thomas showed up at my office unannounced. Mom, I'm sorry, we were stupid. We lost everything because of greed. No, I corrected him. You lost everything because you threw away the one person who truly loved you. Sarah tried next, during my company's launch party. We miss you, Mom. Can't we try to fix this? Some things break permanently, I replied, walking away to chat with Dr. Chen about our expansion plans. Today I signed papers creating the Single Mothers Education Fund at the local community college. Five scholarships annually, helping women like me who want better lives. I watched my twins from afar, Thomas struggling through AA meetings, Sarah working double shifts at a diner, just like their mother used to do. Victoria rots in prison, her scheme finally exposed. Dr. Chen joined our weekly dinner, now a tradition. Any regrets? I looked around my beautiful new home, thought about my successful business, my true friends who stood by me, only that it took losing everything to gain something better. The twins still try reaching out occasionally. Christmas cards, birthday messages. But some betrayals cut too deep for forgiveness. I've learned that sometimes the best family isn't the one you're born with. It's the one that stands by you when everyone else walks away. My story isn't about revenge. It's about justice. The kind that comes naturally when truth reveals itself. I survived, thrived, and learned that success is the best revenge of all. What would you do if your own children betrayed everything you sacrificed for them just for money? Would you forgive them after they lost everything and came crawling back? Or would you stand firm like Melinda did? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video if you believe karma always serves justice. And subscribe to catch more stories of triumph over toxic people.
Remember, sometimes the family you choose is stronger than the family you're born with.